Imaginary numbers. <laughs> yeah, like Snuffleupagus. Hmm, you know, Big Bird's imaginary friend. Okay, so they ended up having to make Snuffleupagus a real character because it was messing up the kids. And sometimes this stuff messes up the kids too. We need to talk about the it, 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 are you nuts? Yeah, it's the imaginary unit. Sure, um, the imaginary unit is defined to be the square root of minus one. Knowing this, let's um explore these roots. Yes. Um, if I was looking at this man, I could break this up into the square root of 25 times minus one. Right? Quite right. Gonna have to stop using the squeaky yellow one. Yeah. Um, then I know the root of the product is the product of the roots, and that's the square root of 25 times the square root of minus one. Okay, so then if we go along these lines, uh-huh, square root of 25 is 5, the square root of minus 1, that's defined to be the R unit, so that's going to be a 5i, and then what? Yeah. And a little flower. Okay, let's talk about my eye chart. Sure. Does that mean Apple makes it? Hmm. No. My eye chart. Absolutely. We talked about the i being the square root of minus one. We're looking to see what i squared is. Oh no! Well, take a look at this. Let's figure this out. If we had i squared, that's the same thing as the square root of minus one squared. Well, what's the square root squared? That thing is the radican. That's minus one. Fun. And that's how we get i squared to be minus one. Okay, now let's take a look at i to the third. i to the third. i to the third. That thing gonna be, that thing gonna be, mm hmm. Um, why don't we call it i times i squared? Okay, well, we know what i is. i, i, i. That's the square root of minus one. Let's just leave it as i. But what was i squared? It was minus 1. So that's going to give us minus i. Okay. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. What about i to the fourth? Well, that thing's going to break up as i squared times i squared. Yes! Which is going to get you a minus 1 times a minus 1. Fun. Yeah, that's going to totally yield you 1. And that's how we get i to the fourth. Yeah. Ooh wee. Here's how this eye chart works, man. Um, if we were looking for i to the seventh, this is the same as i to the zero. Anything to the zero power is one. Well, in this group, it'll be one. Okay, sure. So we start at zero and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, this is gonna be minus i. and a flower. What about i to the 13th? This is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I went way too far. One, two, three, four. Let's take a look at i to the 13th. On our i chart, we can go around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is gonna be i. Yes. With a squeaky flower. I'm still working with my i chart because I wanna see what i to the 69th power is. Sure. So I can start here at zero. And <laughs> that thing gonna be I. But of course, you don't want to go around 
so many times. What do you notice? Mm -hmm. This thing's gonna repeat. This thing's gonna repeat. This thing's gonna repeat every four. Sure. So, if we were looking to see how many groups of four were in 69, yes, we could put 69 in the house, four out the house, uh-huh. Four goes into six one time. There's a four, change the sign, that's a two. Ooh, 29, shoot. That goes in there seven times, seven times four, that's 28. Oh wait, before I get down to that complex number, here I see my remainder is one. So that's i to the first power. Yes. And that's how we got our i. Oh, you want a more rigorous approach. Oh, I get that. Mm-hmm. So then if we were looking for i to the 69 power, that would be um i to the fourth, because that's the groups we're taking, 17 times, times i. Yes. And if you don't believe me, check it. Um, four times 17 is uh, 68 plus one is 69. And it totally works out that way. If you were gonna keep on on this evaluation, you would find that this would be one to the 17th times i, which is gonna get you i. All right, that's how and why that works. Yeah, let's take a look and examine this i chart a little bit more. Using the reciprocal properties of exponents, I know that that's one over i to the third, but guess what? You can go backwards. Minus one, minus two, minus three. This here is gonna be i. Yes. Now that that's all said and done, let's come down here. When we have the product of these roots, the first thing you need to do is you need to pop an eye out. Okay. So let's pop an eye out. This is gonna be, this is gonna be five I times three I. Okay. There we were evaluating roots. Now, whoop, there I am. Um, I'm gonna multiply the numbers in front. That's 15 I squared. But that's 15, what was i squared? It was a minus one, which is gonna be minus 15. Which brings me to this idea of a complex number. Okay, a complex number. It's gonna be, it's gonna have a real part and an imaginary part. A is the real part. And B is the imaginary part. Great. And a complex number can be written in this form.